welcome to Faith Works Designs. My name is Faith, and today we're going to be finishing up our cloth diaper series. I've already made a wet bag, a wet white pod, and a ditty bag so far. If you haven't seen those videos yet, I'm going to leave them in the description. Today we're going to be finishing up our series with a cloth diaper pod. This is a very easy sew, and it is very helpful to have if you're a mom who cloth diapers. So let's get started. Alright, so now you need to grab your um, cotton for your outside and cotton for your lining. Now, I have the pattern for this with all of the measurements and everything in the link below. But don't click it yet. Make sure you watch the rest of the video first and make sure this is something that you want to do and is your skill set, which I'm pretty sure you can do this. So, you want to grab your uh, front and side panel. And what you're going to do is you're going to need regular cotton. And then on the back, you're going to use a fleece interfacing. Um, fleece interfacing is just like regular interfacing, only it just, it gives the cloth diapers a little more body. And so they'll, they'll actually like stand up like they're supposed to, which is really nice. But it's not so stiff that you can't like collapse them. It's, it's a really nice happy medium there. So if you've never worked with uh, fleece interfacing, what it does on one side, it's really, really soft and fuzzy, and on the other side, it's really, really bumpy. And that's the glue that kind of holds your fabric and the interfacing together. So what I normally do is I'll put it on my ironing board with the bubbles facing up, and then I'll put my cotton fabric with the right side facing up, put them right directly on top of each other, and cut your interfacing exactly the same size as your panel. If you have a little bit hanging over the edges and your iron gets it, the glue will get on your iron, and it's really, really annoying. So <laughs> make sure that you cut them both the same size. Then um, it just takes a couple of seconds. You just run your iron over it spot by spot until you get all the way across. And then once that's done, grab your lining fabric. Now we are doing a Harry Potter theme, so we went ahead and did a Harry Potter lining. And then you're going to need a zipper to go all the way across. So I would make it make sure that it's like a, at least an inch on both sides just to make sure that you've got plenty of zipper. Um, again, last zipper in the whole situation. So we will have used our stash. One day I'm going to have to take a video of the stash that I've got. Um, so get all your supplies ready and let's get sewing. So now that you've got your lining fabric faced out, the longer side is going this way, and this is the longer side is the side that we're going to be sewing on. So you've got your longer side, you've got your zipper, and you're going to do your zipper facing up. And what I mean by that is the side that has the pull is going to be the side that you're going to have facing up. And I'm left-handed, so I always have my pull on that side. So meet up with the top of your lining fabric, and then you're going to grab your fabric with the interfacing, and make sure that this print is going to be facing the right way, looking straight on at you. Then you're going to turn it uh, over so that the right side of the zipper and the right side of the fabric are facing each other, and then you're going to clip all the way across and then we're going to sew all of that. Now I put my zipper foot on and what I did was I sewed down um, the right side of my zipper so that the top fabric and the lining fabric are both attached now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open it up and you might want to make sure that when you're doing this part that your top thread and your bottom thread match the top and the bottom of your fabric. If this is just for you, it's not a big deal. You can use whatever color you want. Um, but I normally just make sure that everything matches just to make it look a little nicer. So I turn it inside out, and now what I'm going to do is a top stitch. While you're top stitching, you need to make sure that that fabric that's on the bottom doesn't like creep up to where the zipper is because then you won't be able to open up your zipper. So as if you want, you can lay it out and pull the lining fabric and then pit it so it doesn't move. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. And we're just going to do a top stitch. It's hard to see because the fabric is black, but 
it really makes it look nice when you do that top stitching because it holds everything in place. You don't have to worry about messing with the inner lining when you're trying to unzip it or zip it or sticking your diapers in there and it comes out. Um, it'll be in place and it's not going anywhere. Now, wait. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is just like we did in the very beginning, we're going to have that lining fabric facing up. Then what we're going to do is take the piece that we already had finished. This is the one that we just did and attached to the zipper. We're going to um, put this down with the fabric facing up. Okay. Then you're going to grab your other fabric. And we're going to leave that. Um, you see how the print is? Again, if you have a directional print, you just kind of have to t pay a little bit more close attention to which direction everything's going. So with the long side going this way, we're going to take it so that the print is facing you and you can see it. It's just like the one on the bottom. They're both going in the same direction. We're going to flip it over and put right sides of the fabric to the right side of the zipper. And then we're going to clip and then sew all the way across. Just like we did with the other side, we're going to go down the right side of the zipper. Now just like you did with the other side, you're going to flip it open just like that so that you can see the back and you can see the front. And you're going to top stitch this side just like you did with the last one. So go ahead and do that. Alright, now that you've got all of that done, the top stitching is all done. You're going to grab the top. Um, if you're looking at it, you're going to grab the cotton, the two cotton sides, and bring them together. And then you're going to clip or pin those all the way down. Now, I was doing some wet wipe pods today, so I've got my clips out. That's what I'm going to use. Now, then you're going to take your lining fabric with the right sides together. You're going to match up the very bottoms. Now, if you watch the wet white pod video, what we did was we left a gap in the middle so that we could turn it inside out. The whole idea of this is so that it's fully lined and you don't see stitches um, on the inside or you don't see seams on the inside. So what you're going to do with the lining fabric, not the other side, with the lining fabric you're just going to leave, um, I don't know, about three or four inches in the middle of your lining fabric and leave that open so that you can turn everything inside out when we get ready to do the last step. So I'm going to change my foot out real quick. is I'm going to sew down a little way. And then I'm going to back stitch and then stitch forward. And what I normally do, get your needle up and then lift up your presser foot and pull your fabric down three or four inches just um, for your first one I'd probably do four inches just to make sure you got enough uh, room to put everything back through it. You don't want to rip your seams either, so that's why I make sure that I backstitch so that if the fabric is too thick and it won't go all the way through, you don't want to rip your seams. So I always, always, always do backstitching. To save on thread, I am going to chain piece these together. Side, you go ahead and just sew all the way down. Now, if you can see, what I would have originally done was pulled the lining fabric out, cut the string. 
then put this back in there and you just have a tail this long in between them. And what you do with chain piecing is you just put the next piece behind the next piece, not on top of it so they're, they're sewn together, but right behind it so that you save three or four inches of thread. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're doing a lot of stuff and you're sewing during a pandemic, especially, <laughs> every inch counts. So cut all of your strings and then we'll go to the next step. All right, so now we've got both seams on both sides done. We're going to find the one side, just, just pick any side, and then you're going to find the seam on the very bottom. The next thing you're going to do is find the middle of the zipper. Okay, so you're going to just put those together. So the seam is going to go right on that zipper. The next thing you're going to do is find the seam of the lining fabric right here. That is going to go on to the very back um, seam of the zipper. So we're making a big seam sandwich. So all your seams are right in the middle. That'll make everything nice and straight. And so what I'm going to do, and attempt to do this with it holding it up. Um, I normally would lay this down while I do this, just because it would be a little bit easier. But just um, as you're finding the seams, you can hold it up and then do it that way. So you really want to make sure that zipper is right in the middle when you're doing this. And I may have to fix this when I lay it down. I'm going to make sure that it's nice and flat and you can use as many clips as you need to. So you've got your lining and your outside fabric, they're all together. So seam zipper, middle seam, and then your lining fabric in the seam. Let me do the other side so you can see again. So you're going to grab the middle seam of your cotton right here. Then you're going to grab your zipper and that's going to meet right where that middle seam is. Okay. Then the back of the zipper is kind of like its own little seam. And then you're going to find a lining fabric and put it to that seam. They're all going to meet up and match so that all the seams, um, and I think I've got my lining fabric folded to my left and then the bottom fabric to the right. Okay. And then you just clip all the way across just like we did on the last one. Now on the side that has the pull, the, the zipper pull, we're going to have to put that zipper pull on the inside because if you don't, if you leave the zipper pull out, you're not going to be able to open your bag. And that's kind of the whole point is being able to have a bag that you can actually open up. So what I normally do is get everything all clipped up all over and then what I'll do is just move these just for a second. And I'm going to open my zipper up and I would move it to about the middle of your bag and then lay everything nice and flat and then come back and put these clips as close to the zipper as you can so that zipper doesn't accidentally like warp open or go on top of itself but if you clip right on the sides of the zipper the zipper should stay right where it's at. So now you've got um, both of your sides done and what you're going to do is you're going to take one corner. You're not messing with your lining fabric, but all you're going to do is take your outside fabric fleece and this is why it was really important to get your interfacing really interfaced onto your fabric and you're going to pull like that till you make a point and you're going to try and get that seam right down the middle. Right down the middle. Let me see if I can back out just a tiny bit. Okay, 
push that out of the way. Now the only way you're going to be able to tell if your seam is right down the middle is to do the same thing with your lining fabric. So you're going to open it up just like you did um, the cotton fabric. You're going to open this up. Oh, make sure everything's nice and flat. Now you need to take your finger and kind of rub all the way down and see if that seam is right down the middle. I'm going to adjust my um, lining fabric just a little bit. Now if your seam is running right down the middle then you've done it right. If your seam is kind of like veering off in another direction you need to adjust it again. So let me do it one more time. So we're taking the fabric, opening it up like that, and then we're laying it down making sure that that seam is in the middle as we can get it. Opening this up. Okay, hopefully you can see it. The seam is going to be right down the middle if you've done it right. And I'm going to put a clip kind of up towards the top so it's out of my way. There we go. Now, if you've got a ruler, hopefully it has, it's hard to see, a 45 degree. Okay, so I was trying to get a better angle because my sewing uh, over light is like right over my desk and I think I'm gonna have to move that. All right, so your 45 degree angle line is right here. And what you're gonna do is find the very tip of the point of your triangle there, your little angle, and you're gonna find three. And you're gonna meet those two up together. So the tip of your little triangle is going to touch three. And then what you're going to do, uh-oh, where'd it go? So this is black fabric, so what I would do is get some uh, tailor's chalk, and then I would just um, draw a line across there and mark it. And then what you're going to do is you're going to sew straight across. All right, so I've got my tailor's chalk line, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and sew all this. And then I'm going to do it again for the other three sides. Um, I normally sew one side at a time, so I'll sew this down, bring it back to the table, hold it out again, and then um, you know push down the other side and do the same thing uh, to all four sides, so that all of them have this this line sewn out, so that you create your box shape. everything all sewn up, all four corners. You might want to double do a double check and make sure that you've got all four of your corners um, cut, cut, all four of your corners sewn. And just pick it up and just count one, two, three, four. Make sure that you've got all four because nothing is worse than getting, turning it inside out and then finding out that you only have three quarters. So the next thing you're going to want to do is find that hole that we left in our lining fabric and then turn it inside out. Now, you can do one of two things. So, your fabric is already kind of turned in on itself a quarter of an inch. What you can do, with your little one in the background, he hears me talking. He's supposed to be going to sleep. Um, you can do a ladder stitch here, which if you don't know what a ladder stitch is, um, you essentially go in and out, back and forth, and it, it's almost like an invisible, invisible stitch, I can, I can word today. If you don't know what a ladder stitch is, I can do one in a later video, because it's kind of what I want to do anyway. Um, but for today, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sew this baby shut. We call it done. And it's just as fine. Um, it's still fully lined, technically. You don't see any of the other seams on the corners, you're just going to have this one seam. And 
then just go ahead and cut all your thread. Alright, once you have your seam done on the inside, you just reach right through and on the corners you want to push all of those out. See for sure that you've done all the measurements correctly. And for this cloth diaper pod, I just happen to have some cloth diapers down here. Um, it normally holds about uh, eight pocket diapers. Um, the all in ones, I'm not sure, probably less. It just depends on how much, um, what these, how much stuffing you have going on in there. Because I've seen some mamas with some mamma jamma ones. They were huge. So I just um, have my little boy's diapers that are left over and I just can't seem to part with them because it makes me sad to think about not having cloth diapers anymore. But they're, they're too big for them. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to make it through this video without crying. All right, so you've got your cloth diaper pod, and these are really great. For putting in your diaper bag so that you don't have to be fumbling around with all the other stuff clothes and toys and all that all of your diapers will be in one place and you look really fancy with it because they're really cute and you can do any print that you want um, you can customize them any way that you want and they just hold really well um, I had two in diapers at the time so the eight pack was perfect for me um, to be able to carry plenty of diapers with me wherever I go you could probably put a handle, I've done it on a couple of my larger ones, um, you could put a handle on one side so that you can just kind of carry it as it is. Um, you could put a few less diapers in there and put a thing of wet wipes in there, um, or you can just throw everything in your diaper bag. Alright, well if you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to stick around and see more of our series, you can hit the subscribe button if you want to. Uh, if you enjoyed this series, there's another series coming up of a reusable items. Um, a lot of stuff that I've found that you can make yourself, sew yourself, and then reuse over and over again. So if you want to watch out for those, it'll be coming uh, next week. Um, if you liked all of the patterns that I have here, my cloth diaper pod pattern, all of these as a matter of fact, are on my Patreon. Now I opened up a Patreon because of a certain something going around that's kind of messing around with all of uh, people's small businesses. So um, just to kind of offset the cost and kind of help out with production and keeping things going. Um, I started the Patreon particularly for this pattern because there is literally nowhere that you can find a cloth diaper pod pattern. I had to make this myself and create everything myself. So, And I also have another video on Patreon this month. Um, I made a pillow bed for my son. And I have that video on Patreon as well. It's really great for nap time or if they're going camping or um, daycare or something like that, they can take something to sleep on. So that's on Patreon. If you want to consider supporting me, FaithWorks Designs would really appreciate it. And if not, it's okay. Just keep tuning in. I'll be posting more videos on YouTube shortly. Thanks for supporting us at FaithWorks Design.